Hey guys, it's Catch Hell. Well, we updated the motor, upgraded the battery, finally got this thing put together, and finally got a test ride on it. And I'm obsessed. This thing's awesome. Today I'm gonna go through the 3D modeling for the motor mount, and finally take this thing for a test ride. You're gonna wanna stick around to the end on this one. Let's go. All right guys, so this is the 3D modeling for the QS120 motor, the motor mount, and then the front and rear battery mounts. You can see here, uh, a lot of time and work has gone into this, uh, getting it fabbed up right, and really it's the bulk of the reason why I haven't posted a video on this project in about two months, uh, is all of this. It's been about 12 iterations of trying to get this right. This is the new clean version that I'm printing in carbon fiber nylon right now. And yeah, we'll walk through it. First layer I'll show you is the motor. Get rid of everything else. So this is a motor, QS120. It's about eight inches long. Um, just under five inches in diameter. And overall, it's probably the biggest electric motor you're gonna get into a CL90 frame. This little motor mount that does come with the back, uh, with the motor is flush along the inside of the right side of the frame, which you'll see here. And that basically aligns this front sprocket perfectly up with the rear sprocket with just a little bit of a modification. Um, but overall, it does work and it works very nicely. Didn't even have to change the rear sprocket from the original sprocket on the CL90, which is awesome. It means I get a really nice heavy duty chain on there and I can feel good about going 40 miles an hour down the road because that's what this thing pulls. It's a 9,000 watt motor and with this new 72 volt battery with a max peak amperage of say 150 amps, uh, you're, you're pulling some speed there, which is awesome. All right, so once I had that all modeled up in CAD, I was able to work on the motor mount, which is right there. Motor mount allows me to effectively use three M8 bolts on each side and bolt it into the motor and then not shown. I do have welded on top here, a mount to the front hole of the frame, which is right up here. So there's a hole going through here that it mounts to and then a hole that it goes through here that I, Put a bar through and then bolt it down. So two mounting points on the top, but overall it's kind of mounted along the entire side since I got this motor mount fabbed up for the full uh, one side of it. And then you got the two bars going across. The steel is quarter inch steel and it was plasma cut based on curves I made here in CAD. Uh, Got the parts on the motor, welded them together, and then figured out where I needed to get the final motor mount laid up, welded that on, and then did some grinding, more welding, and made it look as clean as possible. For the next step, which is the battery mount. So now we are no longer going to have the battery on top near the gas tank as the controller is too big and I need to sort the controller in there. Instead, we're gonna have the battery underneath. So. What I've created is the four kind of sockets where the battery mount itself goes for hooking up the battery. And these get, this is where the bolts will go through to mount that uh, part of it. And then the battery will just slide onto it. In the back here, we have the hole where the bar goes through for the rear brake. And then also for the new foot pegs. And then this will just slide on on the back, I can bolt it into the motor along with the motor mount, and then for the front, the same. Up here, you'll notice it's cut out for the front of the bike. That just allows me to get it all flush up into the, to the frame up front, and then all of these on the side here are flush against that motor mount. You can see it does stick out on that right side of the bike. It's about two and a half inches, which isn't bad as the old motor would have done the same. Kind of take off a couple layers here so you can see what I'm talking about for the 
actual pieces themselves. So we got a little bit of support there in the corners. Have a little bit of a inlay there for the motor mount. And then these are cut to allow for room for the motor. Pop on the front and more of the same will inlay a couple of support structures in the corners where it might be a little bit weaker and then up here it is flush to, sh to the frame which is displayed here in red i got that just by tracing underneath onto a paper scanning it into my cad software and then creating a surface out of that curve and then cutting out the surface of the motor correction of the battery mount so I did a, a lot of iterations of these printed out you know every step just to test fit it make minor adjustments and that would be what it took two months to do this as each of these takes about a day to print with just 10% infill but when I'm printing in nylon carbon fiber the orange rear part takes about two days to print and the purple front mount takes about three days to print so a lot of printing, a lot of testing, a lot of time, but overall we are just about there and can nearly ride this thing and feel good about it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you now what it looks like on the bike and then hopefully get a test ride in here soon. All right, so here is the motor. You can see it kind of looks similar to what is on the 3D model. But you can see here, front sprocket, same size as the rear sprocket. And the mount itself has the two bars across with the extra mount I mentioned. And then just bolted on each side with three M8 bolts. All right, so the motor is now mounted up here and right here. Uh, you can see it's in line with the rear sprocket. And the mount holds it three bolts each side and then it's held up here on the mount that comes with the motor. So now we got to install the battery brackets, which go down here and the battery will be right here. So now we got the chain on, the rear battery mount, and then the front battery mount will come down here and then bolt into these two. All right, so for the controller and the gas tank, I'm gonna be taking this thing apart uh, getting off all the unnecessary parts and then cutting it open. It's gonna be a quick little montage of that whole process. Basically just taking an outline of the controller, dremeling out the hole and then adjusting it as necessary to get that thing to fit in there. Eventually this will bolt into the frame with some rivet nuts, um, but that's a little bit down the road. Uh, right now it does just fit snugly in there in place. It rattles a little bit, but it's fine. And then also I'm gonna cut out a hole on the bottom and then a hole into the frame to get those wires up into the gas tank from the motor and the electronics on the handlebar. And yeah, overall I think with this, the look is good. It's definitely different, but it's not protruding enough from the gas tank to be as noticeable as you think it would be. I think it's a great spot for the controller for this setup for me. I would have liked to have it a little bit more hidden, but you know I have limited space on this bike especially, so. Having it here on top of the gas tank just works perfectly and overall this process of cutting out the gas tank wasn't too bad and only took me about two hours to get it done.
All right, guys, so we're taking the CL90 out to the most remote location I could find within about an hour of Seattle. Uh, just a lot of logging roads up here, kind of middle of nowhere out in Snoqualmie. So goal here is to kind of see how she rides, get up to a top speed, uh, see what that is, kind of shake it out, um, kind of get a lay down of what else I need to do on this bike over the next month or two months here. And uh, hopefully we're getting towards the end of this project. I know I'm getting really tired of having this thing sitting around my set and not being able to ride it. So that's what we're doing today. And it's a beautiful day for it out here in Washington. And uh, yeah, we'll see how she goes. All right, so we got the CL90 out here. We're just doing a test ride around on these dirt roads. So we're out of the way of any traffic or cars and we can kind of just, you know, do our own thing with it. Uh, you'll notice I'm missing the front, so we just got a bunch of cord up here. Um, a couple things I've already noticed riding this thing around. Front tire's flat. Uh, the carbon fiber uh, holder broke on where it's supposed to hold on to the motor mount. And overall, I don't know. Uh, this is pretty low. I've already scraped it up. A decent amount but I've talked to the guy who I bought the battery from he can give me a new case uh, really what this means I think you're just gonna take it pretty easy on street roads and not on dirt roads like this out here but that's fine for right now because uh, we're just testing it out and overall I don't know um, the rough paint job I did a while back is pretty shabby and it's already chipping off and I think I might just do a bare frame bike uh, tank, a little rough, it wobbles around a lot. I'm missing one rubber mount in here. Uh, it goes about 35 miles an hour, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you'll see with the drone footage out here. And yeah, uh, a lot of work to be done on it still. Pretty cool to be riding it, but um, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a long project. Spent a lot of money on it. <laughs> Just uh, a little sad. <laughs> But let's take it for a spin. You notice the pegs, pretty close to the chain, but not bad. Pretty quick. What you can kind of do is put your feet on this and then the toes up on the pegs. Alright, let's see how she does on the old gravel. Now that's fun. Holy oh, shit. This is dope. I'm trying to avoid these potholes. This is a fucking blast. I just love it out here on these empty roads. Like, look at this. There's no one out here. Isn't that great? Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. CL90 is a scrambler, but um, not as, as uh, rugged as you'd want it to be. And I think if I want it to be kind of an outdoor bike, I'd have to do metal mounts for the battery and maybe even change where the battery goes. Cause that's just, 
This is not the best spot. This thing's sick. I love this thing. This is so dope. Super fun to ride. And yeah, I mean, holy shit. All right, guys, so let me know what you think about this new motor battery setup. Definitely have a few more things to fine tune with this project, but I think we're getting pretty close in on the overall uh, final product. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Catch y'all.